and welcome to Treasury Notes, a financial education program from the office of West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Studies show when it comes to saving, you're twice as likely to succeed if you have a plan. But once you build that savings, it's equally important to make a plan to protect your money. Coming up on today's show, we'll talk to a certified public accountant about estate planning, learning why you should have a plan, and how to get started. But first, a recent West Virginia Supreme Court decision will have a huge impact on millions of dollars in death benefits. The West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals made a unanimous decision recently saying under the Uniform Unclaimed Property Act, life insurance companies have a responsibility to determine if a policyholder has died and if so, turn over abandoned proceeds to the state's unclaimed property fund. Joining me now to talk more about this landmark ruling is State Treasurer John Perdue and Carolyn Atkinson, Deputy Treasurer of Unclaimed Property right here in West Virginia. Treasurer Perdue and Carolyn, thank you both so much for being here with us today. And Treasurer Perdue, I, I just have to ask you right off the bat, give us some reaction to this unanimous decision and what it's going to mean for the people here in West Virginia. Well, you know, Gina, it was an exciting time in the Office of the Treasury because uh, we've been... Uh, thinking about what we need to do to really reach out and try to uh, get those uh, life insurance policies uh, into unclaimed property to the rightful owners of that property. And you're talking about millions of dollars. So, uh, you know, it took a while to come around to that decision, but we decided we had to go to the Supreme Court. We went to court, we ended up in the Supreme Court, and a 5-0 decision is a big decision uh, to back up what we believe was the rightful owners of property of those life insurance policies, and the insurance companies would have to return that money to unclaimed property instead of holding on to it. And we're talking about millions of dollars of windfall to the loved ones of people in the state of West Virginia and life insurance policies. Carolyn Treasure says it was an exciting time, and it was, wasn't it? Oh, yes, it, it really was. It's very gratifying to see the court uh, be willing to stand up for what's right to return property to the, to the consumers of the state. Now, I know this, this is a large case, Carolyn, but can you give us a little bit of background and why there were questions as to how the un unclaimed property laws really applied to these insurance companies because there were some questions surrounding it? Well, well sure, Gina. Um, so a lot of these life insurance policies dated back to the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. And um, these may have been the type of policies where they're varied, but, but may have been policies where someone uh, came to the plant every week on payday and collected 50 cents from the from the worker there and added it to the value of the policy. And in the case that we called those industri industrial policies, a lot of those were paid up a long time ago. And um, so then they didn't have any more contact with the owners. Um, the issue was, did the life insurance companies have a duty to go back and see whether the owners were still alive or not? And Clearly, if someone was 40 years old in 1940, it seems pretty unlikely they'd still be alive in 2015. Um, the insurance companies had taken the position that they had no duty to try to find these uh, beneficiaries or look and see if their insureds were still alive. Their only duty was if someone came forward with a claim that they had to investigate and see whether the claim could be paid or not. But, you know, we deal in unclaimed property, and that's for the people who have forgotten that they have money out there. And so those are the people that we're trying to help out with this, with this lawsuit. Right, that, that's the whole point of unclaimed property, that it's money that has either been misplaced, forgotten about, or people don't know it's rightfully theirs. So tell us a little bit about how this process happened, that you went about um, this lawsuit and trying to hold these insurance companies accountable, Treasurer Purdue. Well, that decision was pretty easy for me because growing up in West Virginia in, in a rural area of the state where Carlin County referred to where insurance companies are come around and uh, sell insurance policies to a lot of our, our, our West Virginians and they collect every month and write it down. And, and over the years, uh, bigger companies bought out large, uh, other insurance companies and uh, records kind of got displaced and people passed away in West Virginia. We're such a senior-oriented state, and 
and uh, those parents didn't really share that information with their children about their personal business of life insurance policies or so forth or barrier policies. And then what happened is that got lost. And the insurance companies, as Carolyn said, never thought it was their obligation to try to find the rightful owners of those policies, uh, assuming that they might still be alive and they held on to the money. And, uh, and we're the first state to ever step up the plate and finally say, okay, uh, it's time to clear the air and decide what is the right thing to do and who, what power do we really have to go in and audit or try to find uh, those uh, policies or uh, what we need to do. And so I thought it was time for the court to decide that, and I felt all along that that was the people's money, that was the rightful owners of the loved ones that uh, had parents or grandparents or whoever that had those insurance policies, and, and that was their money, not the insurance company's money. And uh, especially when I started seeing that people were over 100 years old and they were still holding on to money. And, uh, and so... Uh, uh, we uh, laid it out, and the court decided in our favor, and it, it really, uh, this court decision really specified, they kind of crossed the T's and dotted the I's, and we won on a lot of different points, and where they laid out, this is what needs to be done, and it was their obligation to have to really try to find, uh, return that money so we could find the right owners. And talking about how much money that is really, that we are talking about here, Carolyn, you and I had a discussion earlier where you said we really don't know what's out there because we haven't had the chance to go in and audit some of these companies. And that's At true, and with, with the outcome of the uh, litigation the way it is, then it'll get remanded back to the circuit court, and at that point, we will be able to do discovery and see uh, what kind of policies, how many policies, how much money we're talking about here. But keep in mind, this is a number of life insurance companies over a period of, say, 75 years, so it, it's a it's a fairly large sum of money, we're confident. So what is the next step? There, there are going to be some things that happen now. Sure. So... Um, so we're we're working on um, on getting a scheduling order together of what comes next in the court case and working with our counsel on that, um, and then also uh, dealing with the life insurance companies as they contact us to to see what the the course is that the, they're going to pursue there. Yeah, Treasurer Purdue, can you talk just a little bit about what kind of impact this decision is going to have on insurance companies and on the people of the state here in West Virginia? Well, I think uh, insurance companies, uh, they're not bad companies. I think now they have a direction and they will work with us now that the court has decided this is what needs to be done. Uh, they will work with us uh, in trying to uh, get those rightful uh, owners of uh, insurance policies back to the rightful owners. Uh, as for the state of West Virginia and the people, uh, I think this is a great day. I mean, it was a great day. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward, as I always have, I've always fought hard as treasurer for any unclaimed property money out there to the, giving it back to the right owners. And this is a lot of money. This is, a, we go back in the 40s and the 50s and uh, where records are hard to really uh, find. And so this is going to give us the opportunity to really find a lot of money, I feel, to some of the rightful owners in the state of West Virginia. And uh, that's a, whenever you can return that money like that, that's a good day for uh, the treasurer's office and that's a good day for the state of West Virginia. So it's exciting and I look forward to being able to reach out uh, to a lot of West Virginians and returning their loved ones money to them. And I just want to point out, Justice Ketchum wrote in his concurring opinion that this that it is estimated there is more than a billion dollars in death benefits held by insurance companies that are unclaimed by the beneficiaries of deceased policy holders. So what have insurance companies been doing with this money up to this point? Because now things are going to change. Right. So um, up until this, this time, they just held it in their reserves um, and kept earning money on it. And, um, of course, in certain instances, if, if they... If there were premiums that had to be paid that weren't paid because the owner had died, they might just take, take that policy into income and not hold it aside anymore. 
Carolyn, we talked about this earlier too. This decision d doesn't just affect us here in West Virginia. This also could have a national impact. The Supreme Court decision here in the state could have a national impact. Yes, it could, and it, it, it most likely will. So, um, insurance companies have been told that they need to um, they need to take reasonable efforts to find out whether their insureds are still alive. They need to try to find those beneficiaries if the insureds have passed away. And this is, you know, this is um, a precedent that other states are going to use to build on uh, when they are trying to determine what their policies are about uh, requiring insurance companies to comply with the law. And this has been an issue in other states. It just hasn't been addressed as it was addressed now here in West Virginia. Right. This is the this is the first time that the treasurer's office that a treasurer's office has brought litigation to resolve this. So treasurer, have other states reached out to you? Have other treasurers reached out to you to talk about what the impact will be nationally um, because of this decision? Well, absolutely. I've already had phone calls from a lot of treasurers around the state. Uh, you know, thanking us for uh, stepping up the plate. For once again, West Virginia was first. Not uh, we stepped up the plate and decided we wanted to resolve the issue. And doing so, we've opened up a door of opportunity for a lot of other states to do the same thing or to uh, look at those insurance companies and say we want the same deal that West Virginia is going to get with their policies. And I see uh, this being a national. Uh, you know, they're going to. It's going to go nationally, uh, where every state that has unclaimed property, which they all have unclaimed property. We'll be able to uh, deal with these insurance companies a lot easier and getting money back to the rightful owners. So it's exciting not only for West Virginia but for the whole nation. Like uh, Justice Ketchum said, a billion dollars is a lot of money. Right. And that the uh, insurance companies were holding on to around the country. And now uh, uh, it's going to open up the door to be able to return that money to the rightful owners. All right, Carolyn, can you give us an idea about how long it's going to take before we see the impact of this decision? I know Treasurer Purdue is probably ready right now to start handing out some, some checks from unclaimed property. <laughs> sure, so we really have two aspects um, to this. And, and the first one is, what are what practices are insurance companies going to do from here forward? And I think we should that we should see a change in what they're doing now as a result of the Supreme Court decision because now they know that there is a duty to go back and determine on an ongoing basis whether their insurance are still alive or not. And then we have the the retroactive part of it with the old policies and what's going to happen with those. And the policies that are um, in the litigation probably will take a while to resolve depending on. Um, what what happens at the circuit court level and uh, what how the willingness of the um, insurance companies to cooperate but I think as far as seeing what is a currently issued where the insured has died and ongoing policies then I think we should start to see an influx of those pretty soon and we'll start to see a change in how these insurance companies are reporting unclaimed property of course so what will the unclaimed property division do to try and get this money now to the rightful owners um, once we start seeing an increase in reporting sure so Gina we do a number of things to try to to find the rightful owner we have um, a newspaper ad that we publish two times a year that has the names and addresses of owners. We have a website that has all the properties that are at least $25 posted on there that people can go to wbtreasury.com and look for their name and see if they have unclaimed property and that's a big way that people return get get their money back. We have people that go out and look for these people and see and we're working on a project to um, where, where we've already started, but we're building on a project that, that we have where we send out letters to updated addresses to try to find people. Um, when we get unclaimed property frequently, it's because there's a bad address. There's not a known address. And so we, we can go through databases and find um, a better address and send it out and hopefully locate that person and return that money. Right. Treasurer Purdue, any final thoughts? Well, with technology today, there's a lot of ways to find the rightful owners of that money. But the most important thing is, as I said, we're a senior oriented state. I kind of envision we may do a little special insert on the life insurance policies and where we'll focus on that. And, and these people out here in West Virginia, they remember their neighbors, they remember their friends, they go to church with them, they went to church with them, and they're going to help us as they have in the past really find those rightful owners or their loved ones that money. 
All right. Thank you, Treasurer Purdue. Thank you, Carolyn, for being here with us today. And claims are filed on a daily basis for unclaimed property. Checks are also issued on a regular basis. Sometimes Treasurer Purdue does have the opportunity to personally deliver a check to an unclaimed property recipient. That was the case recently when Treasurer Purdue had the pleasure of presenting a check to a nonprofit organization. Workers were thrilled to have their money returned, as Kim Ward reports. United Way is a great organization, which I well know, and, and uh, hopefully this will help in this area, uh, boost the United Way efforts uh, to help the citizens of this great county. Members of the United Way of Gilmer, Lewis, and Upshur counties have been eagerly awaiting this visit from Treasurer Purdue. Yeah, we've been we waiting for this for a long time. <laughs> This unclaimed property was the result of a lost donation meant for the United Way. But like any other unclaimed funds, this money had to make its way through the unclaimed property process before it could be returned. If it hadn't been for the website, I would have never been able to retrieve this. And uh, with their help, um, I called them and um, with their help they told me how to fill out the forms and everything, so it was, they were a great help with this. And at more than $78,000, this check will give the United Way a boost like never before. On a normal year, our um, allocations that, and the money that we raise are around $75,000 goal. This check that we're receiving of over $78,000 will go a long ways to be able to provide funding for our agencies. For Treasurer Purdue, the joy he feels in presenting a large check to the United Way is no different than the joy he has returning even the smallest amount of unclaimed property to individuals in West Virginia. And I think it's very important to return people's money to the right borders. Oh, and so we work hard at that. Reporting for Treasury Notes, I'm Kim Ward. While the Treasurer's Office works hard to return all forms of unclaimed property, there are steps you can take to make sure your benefits and property never become unclaimed. Find out how estate planning can help coming up next. But first, we're going to take a quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Treasury Notes. I'm your host, Gina Joins. Even if you don't have a lot of money or assets, what you do have is still worth protecting. That's where estate planning can help. It isn't just for the rich. All income levels can benefit from a proper estate plan. And you can maintain your finances through your lifetime, and it can also uh, take into account what happens to your assets after death. Joining me now to talk more about this is Marlon Witt, a certified public accountant and a member of the Charleston Estate Planning Council. Marlon, thank you so much for being here with us today. This is a great topic, one we've never really talked much about here on Treasury Notes, but something that I think is definitely worth a good discussion. Thank As you. I mentioned, there are a wide variety of people who may benefit from estate planning. Isn't that true? That is true. Uh, everyone needs an estate plan, um, either now or you know, we all die at some point so at some point we're all going to need an estate plan it's not just what happens to your assets when you die but also what um how you're going to accumulate those assets the folks that you're going to leave behind to make sure that they're protected and also sometimes things happen we live in an uncertain world sometimes things happen before you know, we become disabled um, we're unable incapacitated unable to take care of our own affairs and we need to make sure we have a plan in place to take so care of that. So it's probably never too, you're probably never too young to start this process. I don't think so. I think that everyone needs a plan even from the young parents starting out with kids. They want to make sure that they have a guardian appointed for them. They want to, um, as they grow their assets and start saving for college and making sure that the kids are taken care of down the road. Um, I think there's always a need for estate planning from the young to the old. And let's talk about who really needs to have an estate plan. I mean, talk about age range. What about um, income level range? Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the word estate, they think, okay, that's something, that's something for the rich. It's not for me. Those with a lot of money and a lot of assets certainly do get the, the attention. They're, it comes to mind that they need an estate plan. And that's true 
but it's also true of those without significant assets. Um, whether you're just starting out, um, you have, have a job, you don't make a, a ton of money, but what happens if you're gone at that point? What happens to your wife, your husband, your kids? How do you continue to provide for them? So it's important, an estate plan can help you take care of that. So that maybe through life insurance, um, additional savings, you can accumulate an estate that would provide for them after you're gone. So how is an estate plan different from a will? A will is a tool that's used in estate planning pretty regularly. I mean, it's an important tool, it's a powerful tool, but it's also often used um, interchangeably, and they're not completely interchangeable. A will is a plan that sets out what's gonna happen to my assets when I'm gone, who's gonna be named guardian of my children if, if I don't have a, another parent left to take care of them. So it's an important tool, but it only controls the assets that are in your name. Um, it wouldn't control things like joint checking accounts, IRA, life insurance um, designated beneficiaries. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's an important thing, but it's not the entire plan. So is there anything else that you wouldn't think of that might be considered in creating an estate plan other than money maybe? Uh, Often you'll have a will, but most advisors, when you're, you go to an attorney and they pre prepare the documents for you, which is the way the route that most people take, and it's a good way to do it, they'll prepare a power of attorney in case you're incapacitated. Someone can pay your bills using your, your, checking, your checkbook, um, if you're in a coma, if you're... Um, just uh, you going through surgery and you can't do things yourself. They, they also do medical powers of attorney usually to uh, make medical decisions for you in case you're in the hospital. Um, those are things that people don't normally think of because when things are going well, we don't always think of what can happen if things go bad. Right, and a lot of people think if something does go wrong, well then my spouse, everything will just go to my spouse and that'll be the end of it. I don't need a will, I don't need an estate plan because that's just what's gonna happen. Right. And, uh, that's true in some cases, but it's not always the case, especially something that comes to mind right away is in a, a situation where you have children outside of the marriage that aren't with your current spouse, your spouse would only get a fraction of it, so the children might get a fraction of it. What if, um, you know, a lot of times spouses travel together a lot. What if they're in a common accident and something happens to both of them? Then you need to have a plan to make sure that what you want happens to your assets. Sure. Sure. A lot of people think this is a complicated process. It's going to be expensive. They put it off. Is that a good reason to put it off or is that really the case? <laughs> it can be the case. It can be expensive. It can be complicated. Every plan is unique and tailored to you, but it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be as complicated as you make it, but you know, there are basic plans that, can, um, that attorneys can help you with. You can even do it online is one option, although I don't know that I recommend that, but it's nice to have that personal attachment to an advisor that can help you and walk you through it. And um, besides, it's nice to have someone, you need to tell somebody about what your plan is. It's great to make the plan, but if you never tell anyone that's left to help implement that plan, you haven't really done what yeah, you need to. Yeah, if it's hidden in your desk drawer and they don't find it till years later, it really has done no exactly. good, right? So you need to communicate with a trusted advisor or a family member, a spouse, kids, whoever, that can help take care of it after you're gone. Tell what assets you have, where to find things, life insurance policies, all of that. So Marlon, is this a one-time process or is this something that people need to continue to update and continue to revisit? It's definitely an ongoing process. Okay. We, our lives change, we hit different stages of our life as we're going through. You wanna continually update that. You wanna revisit, make sure it still meets your needs, make any changes that are necessary as your assets grow, as your family changes, um, maybe your desires, what you want when you're 20 isn't what you want when you're 60 or 80 or <clears throat> it, um, it changes. So it's yeah. good to revisit that from time to time. Okay, so earlier we talked to Treasurer Purdue about the court decision that just came down requiring insurance agencies to report life insurance benefits upon death. Um, as, as an insurance policy holder, how can you make sure that it never really gets to that point where that insurance benefit ends up in unclaimed property? Because you can help prevent that. Yes, 
um, that's a really good point. It's great work that they've done to help prevent that. And it's always been a fear of mine that what if there's money on the table that we never find out about? Because yeah. it's hard enough when the clients are alive and you're talking to them that they don't necessarily always know what insurance policies they have and where they are. So getting capturing that information while the client's alive to tell you about it is so much easier than after the fact when you're digging through the attics and the dust drawers trying to capture that information. So figuring out what you have, passing that information on so that your heirs can make the call. The insurance companies are there sitting by the phone waiting to, to pay it out. But if nobody calls in the past, they just kept the money. So Yeah. Yeah. And as you know, depending on what age you are, it, like I said, it's probably never too early to start thinking about this. But at the same time, it's probably a good idea if you may be um, responsible for someone like an older parent or an aunt or uncle that you encourage them to do the same thing. Absolutely. It's a hard conversation to have, but it's good to talk to your your, pa your parents, relatives, whoever that are, might be older so you can help them through the process. Find out what their wishes are. Don't wait till you're in the ambulance on the way to the the hospital to have those conversations. Well, I said earlier this can be a daunting task for many people. How can they find assistance with estate planning? Where do they go to? <clears throat> A couple of local sources in West Virginia, the Charleston Estate Planning Council is here local on their website. Um, they have a list of members that are trust officers, accountants, lawyers, insurance agents that are all um, specialized in this area and can help people meet their estate planning needs. The North Central West Virginia chapter is in the northern part of the state. Those ha have similar resources. Um, if they're looking for just basic information, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants has a website, 360 Degrees of Financial Literature, which is 360financialliterature.org. And if you go into the retirement section, they have basic estate planning um, tools, articles, things that can help people kind of figure out what they need to do. So you um, can go to a lawyer, but that's not necessary. It's a good idea for the documents that you draw up are legal documents. You could technically, I think, do your, your own will, but really probably not a good idea. In extenuating circumstances, it might be better than nothing, but it's really best to get professional legal opinion to, to actually implement the estate plan. And we talked a little bit about this earlier, but many people think an estate plan only outlines what happens in death, but there are other uses for it, correct? Certainly. Um, it, that's the part that gets attention is what, what happens to my assets when I'm gone. But also, it's a plan, so you're determining what your estate will be. Do I need to make additional savings? Do I have to buy life insurance so that I'll have enough, big enough of a state to meet my needs, to take care of the dependents? Do I have um, you know, children to take care of? Do I have family or relatives with special needs that need additional um, assets to take care of them if I'm not there to take care of them? Um, it could be important for that. Uh, you also, the powers of attorney, the medical powers and financial powers in case something happens to you that you're incapacitated are also import, an important part of the plan. So any final thoughts on uh, how people can get started and just advice in general about estate planning? I do think it's, a, you mentioned it, but it is a hard topic. It's you know, emotional, it's psychologically, it's just hard to deal with, but it's important. You're not doing it so much for yourself as you are for your family, friends, loved ones that are gonna be left behind to, to deal with you. not only your, the loss of you, but your financial affairs and to get those in order. So it's important to deal with that, make sure things happen the way that you want them to, according to your desires. Um, the state has a, may have a plan for you, but it may not be the one that you want. So All right. I encourage Some everyone to to plan. Plan, plan, plan. Some great information. Thank you so much, Marlon, for joining us today and taking the time to sit down with us. That's all the time we do have. Thank you for joining us. Remember, you can always get the latest news and information from the State Treasurer's Office. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on our website. Keeping you informed on the Library Television Network, I'm Gina Joins with the Office of West Virginia State Treasurer, John Perdue.